respected uh, Father Anthony Kareel, Dr. Uh, Joseph Varghese, Dr. Isaac, the uh, principal of this great institution, uh, Dr. Uh, Joseph, who has, uh, along with my friend Alexander and Father, persuaded me to uh, accept this very uh, prestigious assignment, if I may say so, of uh, addressing you this evening. Well, uh, let me greet the members of the faculty present here, the, the lady Professor uh, Dr. Rosemary Verghese, other distinguished members of the audience, and most importantly, my young friends. And as I said, I was somewhat reluctant to uh, deliver uh, a lecture of this kind for the reason that I did not feel up to talking to you about uh, excellence, pursuit of excellence. But uh, Father and uh, my friend Alex did really uh, encourage me, persuade me to say, I mean, to, to accept. So here I am. And uh, I realize that you have had uh, the great privilege of listening to and interacting with our uh, former uh, president, the great uh, visionary leader, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam. You have had the uh, opportunity of listening to uh, my former colleague and currently governor of West Bengal, Mr. Uh, Narayanan, and the great uh, leader of industry, a pioneer in many ways, the uh, founder uh, of Infosys, Sri Narayana Murthy, and uh, I'm sure a galaxy of other eminent people who would have talked to you about, of course, based on their own perceptions and experience, what this pursuit of excellence is all about. Well, let me say at the outset that I have no prepared text to deliver. I have not even uh, had the occasion to go through the series of lectures which were delivered in the past years, although I got uh, a copy each of them. And most unfortunately, uh, I uh, could not, let me make a confession, think through what I am going to tell you. So what I am going to talk to you in the next few minutes would uh, come straight from my heart without any preparation, without any preconceived ideas of what I am going to talk about, what message I want to give, nothing of the kind. So, um, um, Father, you and your colleagues, if you feel disappointed, you forgive me. <laughs> because I thought now that I should have had a very good uh, prepared uh, lecture to deliver to you, you know, based on one's experience of this aspect of life or the other. Well, maybe because uh, as, a, as a bureaucrat, that's a word which is used to describe uh, fellows like me, 40, 45 years of uh, going through the grind from one job to the other. Father uh, and uh, Mr. Principal, there's nothing great about this. You know, these are things which uh, come uh, in the career of somebody who joins a service. You know, you, you read out many things. I don't think they make any great sense, at least uh, in retrospect, I believe so. But be that as it is. But I, I also realize that for uh, the younger generation, which is represented in this room, in this lecture hall, brilliant young minds, you know, they are bringing, brimming with ideas. They are uh, eager to get into the, into the real world and do something which others have not done. 
They all want to do something big, something great. And uh, that too, not after 20 or 30 years of gathering all kinds of uh, experience, straight, get into, get into the act. That's the spirit of the youth. So I realize that although I am fairly old, I, get, uh, I don't miss any opportunity like this to talk to, talk to uh, youngsters like you. I was with uh, a, a large uh, gathering of uh, graduates, postgraduates, and uh, uh, PhD, you know, degree holders from uh, the um, Institute of Technology in uh, in Kodikodi yesterday. It was a it was a very big gathering of uh, very bright youngsters. So recently, I also have had the opportunity of talking to a group of students. Not students, actually, they are also, you know, passing out of the Sikkim Manipal University in Gangtok. So I use these opportunities to renew myself because I know that uh, inevitably I am growing old, my ideas are becoming stale, and I should be, you know, I believe, and I should attempt at least, whether I succeed or not is a different issue, to learn from you, to understand what the thinking is in the minds of the youngsters, in whose hand immediately the future of this country, the future of our state depends. So friends, after saying a few words, as I said out of my heart, without any preparation, with the permission of uh, uh, the father director and the principal, I am going to request you to tell me something which is uppermost in your mind. The thoughts that occur to you at this point of time in your life, you are, most of you I believe, uh, you know, on the threshold of becoming a, a graduate or a postgraduate in one discipline or the other. Some may be in engineering, others may be in management, others may be in some other discipline. But you have had uh, the great privilege of uh, Student, of being students of this great institution of excellence. Well, it may, be, may not be out of place to mention that institutions of this kind promoted by the Christian community played a wonderful part, a significant part, and a great contribution to the furtherance of education in uh, the state of Kerala. Well, I myself am a product of uh, an institution, of a Christian institution, both in school as well as in college. And I believe in all sincerity that Christian institutions of education are uh, by and large not only centers of excellence, but they inculcate in you, even without your knowledge, certain values which will stand you in good stead, you know, in years to come. Well, therefore, you are a very, very privileged group of youngsters. That's the first point that I would like you to remember all times to come. You are a very small minority of students who have got this great opportunity this great privilege of being in an institution of excellence like this. Well, the other side of the same coin is that there are hundreds of thousands of youngsters like you who are, for one reason or the other, denied this opportunity. So on the one hand, you have that opportunity, you enjoy that opportunity. At the same time, you realize or we realize that there are many, many like you who are denied this opportunity. Unfortunately, that is true, not only of the state of Kerala, but by and large true of the whole country. Well, it may be true of many other parts of the world also, but let's always bear in mind that tremendous disparities, tremendous differences in the opportunities that youngsters get access in our society today. Well, perhaps 
maybe at a later point in your life when you get settled down you may have the time to reflect on this aspect of human existence that whether we like it or not there are sections of society who enjoy the best in the world and there are at the same time our own brothers and sisters you know part of our society part of our community who are deprived of this opportunity well the other two points which i would like to leave with you for your thought one while aspiring to get the best in the world for yourself to your family to your community you know always always not when you join an institution not when you reach a certain level in that at all the time all the time we go through processes of change we go through processes of learning so throughout your life you are a student and based on my own experience of more than 40 years and doing one job or the other in government i believe that what has made me what i am today to a large extent depends upon or depends or depended upon what i got from others it is what i learned from others what others taught me that made me succeed if i ever succeeded in which our small little way in uh, the task which you are assigned to me and for this i believe if you analyze it you have to have an open mind i mean often particularly when we learn something in depth about a subject whether it is in the area of humanities or science or whatever it is we sometimes tend to think that we know everything there nothing which others are, can teach you my dear friends for those people who are in positions of authority this attitude is most avoidable as one who has gone through this i repeat being or having an open mind open to ideas open to thoughts of other people open to learn from others that i think should be the most distinguishing characteristic of a person who is interested with some authority whether it is the principal of a school the dean of a faculty in an institution you know the head of a state government the head of a company whoever he or she is these are all people who have some authority some position to decide things to influence the course of events in that particular organization of which they are a part they have to be open to ideas none of us should ever believe or think that we are the repository of all wisdom the humility to admit the humility to keep in mind always always that there is something to learn from practically every human being with whom you come into contact he has an experience of his own which is different from what you have got so the willingness to listen to other people with an open mind and accept gracefully whatever is what whatever you 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 assimilate from your interaction with other people again based on my own experience of holding several odd jobs here and there at many points of time having this element of you know by chance an authority or um, a position where one could uh, take uh, decisions one could uh, be a part of the process of implementing decisions i believe that responsiveness on the part of those who are in positions is extremely important responsive to the needs the requirements of others well a teacher should be aware of 
the needs of his students. He should be responsive to the requirements coming from his student community. Similarly, you know, the head of an institution should be responsive, should be willing to listen and willing to accept if those who are working with him, his colleagues and associates, give him suggestions which are worth accepting. The third point which I would like you to keep in mind, particularly as you are on the threshold of getting into a career or the other, is to encourage participative decision making. You see, often we find that decisions are handed down to you. You do that, you do this, you don't do this. This is the law, this is the rule. You do it. Well, we have, uh, you know, organizations where uh, command and control is the rule. In, a, in, a, in an organization like the police force or the armed forces, which work on the principles of command and control, to my mind, is not the 